Good morning. Did you notice in our text this morning, I think it is the second phrase. It says, let us lay aside every weight. Now that is something that is kind of sensitive to everyone today, laying aside weight. I mean, uh, weight discussion these days might not be the most popular thing, and, and I get it because we, we probably need to do some things to, to change our habits, to be a little healthier in the things that we eat. I mean, on Friday, I ate a carrot, and, and I started to choke on that carrot, <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, a donut would probably not do that to me. <laughs> and so we, we need to be thinking about these things. And yesterday, I ate a salad. I did. I ate a salad. Well, it, it was mostly um, croutons and tomatoes. Well, really, it was mostly a big crouton with tomato paste and cheese and gra Well, yeah, okay. I ate a pizza, all right? I ate pizza. Yeah, I did. Fine, fine, fine. And we, we need to be thinking about those things, though, and it was echoing in my head uh, my, my doctor visit that I had by way of Zoom this past week. And my doctor asked me some things. He said, um, so how is, your, uh, how is your, your, your blood pressure? And I said, well, you know, man, it's about the same. How, how is your blood sugar? Eh, it's about the same. How is your weight? Well, eh, it's about the same. He said, how are you doing exercise-wise? Well, Stephanie and I found a place to go and walk every day, and that's really good. So how's your diet? Now, wait a minute, Doc. You're getting kind of personal here. <laughs> but when we, uh, we consider these things carefully this morning, we know that we, we have to be, be careful with our weight because, you know, we can step up on the scale, and, and it can say one at a time, please, and we wonder who's on the scale with us. Well, spiritually speaking, this weight, the sin that so easily ensnares us that we see here in our text, is when we're standing on the scale and the devil steps up there with us. And unless we lay him aside, unless we push those things aside, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. And sometimes we get right there in that yellow zone and he's got a toe on the scale. He's right there behind us, ready to go. We need to be checking to make sure we've laid aside every sin and every weight that can ensnare us. We need to look at things in a spiritual way very carefully. Because when this social distancing thing is all over, and we come back together as God's people, what a wonderful blessing will that be, amen? Now, now think with me about that, though. When we come back together as God's people, how's your Bible reading been? Have you been coming to Bible classes that we have been offering? Are you going to be meh about the same you were before? Or will you be getting closer? Will you move the needle toward God? Let me encourage you today as we look at this text together. We need to be a people who are concerned not with business as usual, but being better than usual when it comes to our service to God. Now, when we look at our text, it begins with this idea that we're surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses. What's he talking about there? He's talking about those we find in Hebrews chapter 11. There we often call that the, the hall of faith. <laughs> And we're going to look at some of those who are on display on a virtual tour of Hebrews chapter 11 this morning. Now, our text says we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, think about them. As the writer encourages us to lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and then he says, run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, if we want to be successful as God's people, then we're going to want to be those who, who look at where there are those who have set for us great examples, great people of faith. Then we're going to evaluate ourselves and where we really are, and then look at what we need to do to put ourselves closer to God, to move the needle back towards God and draw closer to Him. Now, the first 
example that we find. The first one on display that we're going to look at this morning is found in Hebrews 11 in verse 4. By faith. Now, when we go all the way back to the beginning of chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not, things not seen. Now, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained, Abel did, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. Now, and through it, he being dead still speaks. His example speaks for us today. Now, when we look at this verse, we have two characters mentioned. There's Cain and then there's Abel. Abel chose to do what was right in the sight of God. He chose to please God in every detail. Now, Cain, eh, not so much. Cain didn't want to offer an animal sacrifice. He didn't do that which was pleasing to God. And then Cain became jealous and angry. And why is that? Well, Cain wanted to accept his good deed and what he had done as proper sacrifice. Cain wanted to do something that was good and, and give it to God and expect God to, to appreciate what he had done. But God had, God had chosen a way by which sin would be rolled forward. Cain missed the boat on two different points. First of all, God had chosen that animal blood would be sacrificed to roll sin forward. And number two, God was looking for obedience. God was looking for obedience. Now, no doubt Abel, being a farmer of, of livestock, had those things readily at his hand. And, and Cain, uh, being a farmer of the ground, a tiller of the ground, would have had to have uh, maybe done some trading with Abel, perhaps, to, to, to get some livestock. Either way, it was possible for Cain to do that, which was pleasing to God. But he wanted God to just take whatever he thought was the right thing to do. It makes me think of this very day. Because you see, our great God, many generations ago, created a, a wonderful thing called music. Music is lovely, it's beautiful. Oh, how I love music. But, but you see, we look into the New Testament and, and we don't see any time when first century Christians gathered when they worshipped with instruments made with hands. They worshipped with the instrument of the heart, the voice. The voice. That's that with which they worshipped. We don't find any example of adding anything else to the worship in the New Testament. So why would we want to do that? Well, folks, I present to you the idea that there are many canes out there today. And we can learn from this example not to add to those things that God has given us, not to expect God to just appreciate what we would have Him to do. You see, there are lots of kings out there who want to add to modern worship. Now, when we look back at Cain, he was so upset that he still denied the responsibility of disobedience. And then Cain even killed his brother. And all he did was harden his heart more and more and more. When, when you look at this display, which are you? Cain, expecting God to just take whatever you'll give him? Or Abel, who was fully obedient? Obedient Abel or cursed Cain? You know what the wonderful news is, is that you don't have to be a Cain. If you've been there, you don't have to stay there. You can move the needle back towards God. God is great, and He's giving you a chance this morning to learn and to make a better decision, to go in a better direction. Now, the next person we're going to look at in our virtual tour of the Hall of Faith is found down in verse 7. By faith, Noah. Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. 
Now, Noah did something in common with Abel. Noah did what God would have him to do. He did things God's way. We see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, that Noah, because of his obedience, found grace in God's eyes. God told Noah, by the way, to go build an ark. An unusual request by no doubt. And then we see as we continue our reading in Genesis 6 that God told Noah to use gopher wood. Now I'm sure there was plenty of wood available and all types of wood available. And probably some readily at hand that might have been easier to deal with than gopher wood. But God said use gopher wood. Now what would have happened if Noah had chosen a different wood? Now we know, don't we? We know indeed. There will be many this very day who will find themselves following the broad way as there would be those who teach things that are not in God's Word. Substituting. Substituting. And those things would, would appear to, to make us a little happier, make us feel better. You know what makes me feel better? Eating chocolate cake. Do you know what that does to my blood sugar? No, I, I do need to actually eat the healthy things. And if we want to be healthy spiritually, then we have to look at God's Word and take Him for what He tells us that we need to do. I wonder what would have happened. If Noah had not placed the pitch, the tar that God told him to put on the sides of the ark, what would have happened? Well, you know, you know, just as well as I do, it would have sunk. It would have sunk. But there are those today who will teach an answer to the most important question that man has today, which is what must I do to be saved? What must I do to reach that eternal home? And there will be those who will leave out the fundamental things that we find in God's Word. The thief, if he wants to be saved, can't continue to steal, right? Well, that makes sense. That's repentance like we read about in Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. The murderer cannot continue to kill and be saved, can he? No. That's a change. That's doing something differently. That, that's following God's way. Jesus tells us about the fact that we need to confess that He is the Son of God in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32. If we want Him to confess us before the Father, there it is. Example after example we also find. But there are those today who teach something else who might sprinkle in some of these things, but leave out these things, and, and would also leave out this idea of baptism. They'll leave out baptism. I wonder what would happen if Noah left the pitch off the ark. Well, it would have sunk. What will happen to us if we, if we had the idea that baptism is some sort of ritual that demonstrates something that's already happened? That's not what the Bible tells us. 1 Peter 3 and verse 21 tells us that the light figure whereunto baptism does also now save us. Hmm. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God's Word tells us that repentance, confession, and baptism are fundamental actions of the believer. The believer. That's doing things God's way. That's what Noah and Abel had in common. They, they were doing things God's way. As we continue looking at our virtual tour, we're going to find ourselves at verses 8 through 9. By faith, Abraham obeyed. Abraham obeyed. When he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, now notice this. As he went out, not knowing where he was going. <clears throat> he didn't know where he was going. But by faith he dwelt in the land of promise, 
as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was told to go. He didn't even know where he was going. But he led his family to follow after God. Now we know Abraham was certainly a great man of faith, and yet we also know that he struggled and he failed. And yet, Abraham made the hall of faith. What about you? When you consider that these men were simply of mankind, just like you and I, what kind of end result do you want? When we look at this virtual tour, we, we see that there's an end result of those who obeyed God, and we see success when they are obedient to God. They had something in common. They exercised. They exercised the power of choice. <laughs> you know, this idea of exercise and people finding all kinds of alternate ways of doing that rather than going to the gym. My, how we have been conditioned to do that, by the way. And, and we've learned to do so many other things to get exercise. And, and I, I heard that a man said to his doctor, I can't exercise. I've discovered that I'm allergic to it. And the doctor said, excuse me, allergic to exercise? Well, he said, now look, when I exercise, my skin gets all flushed and, 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 and then my heart races and then, then I get sweaty and short of breath. I'm allergic to it. It's very dangerous. Now, we're not talking about the coronavirus. We're talking about a walk around the block. You see, as much as you and I can get physical exercise, we can exercise the power of choice to move the needle closer to God. But having that choice means that I need to make a reality check and, and see where I actually am versus what God has told me that I need to do. When we look at our text back in verse 2, we, we see, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Now watch this marvelous phrase. And has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <laughs> Abram, Noah, and Abraham all knew God as sovereign creator. They all knew God as Savior. And Jesus Christ, the Word, we read of in John chapter 1, is God the Son. The one by which all things that were created were created. Knowing that Jesus is the Savior, my question today is, are you looking to Him? He is the author and finisher of our faith. And when we, we look into those things we find in God's Word, we do find straightforward things concerning worship and concerning salvation. Following God means that I'm not going to be following some man-made manual, some creed, some additional books, some, some handouts, some pamphlets. No, I'm going to simply follow what God would have me to do. And if I'm going to do that, I need to remember what we find as an example set before us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. We're going back and looking at Abraham again. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Abraham surely wanted Isaac to live, but Abraham sacrificed his own will. We, too, must sacrifice our own wills. There was a guy that I heard recently say, you know, I have willpower. It's just kind of late sometimes. I seem to only remember I want to lose weight after I've eaten nine cookies.
we have to sacrifice our own wills in order to be pleasing to God. There's no doubt that Abraham wanted Isaac to live. And yet he followed God's command all the way to holding the knife and preparing to take his son's life. And God rewarded his faith and stayed his hand. What will God do with your faith? What would the reward be? Where are you right now? God gave Abraham a command. Abraham followed God's command. Abraham went to worship. We have a wonderful and great God, creator of all things. And our great God has, has chosen the way by which He will be worshipped. When we look in the New Testament, we find in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 that worship is shown to us in first century prayer. We see that in this same verse. That they gathered on the first day of the week. And they broke bread. They honored the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior. In the communion. We see that they worshiped together praising Him in song. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. And then back in Hebrews in chapter 2 and verse 12. And he showed us as well that they met on the first day of the week. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And there we also find within the pages of God's Word, as Corey so aptly mentioned before in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 1, worship done in giving. So we see prayer, communion, songs. We see preaching mentioned in Acts 20 and verse 7, when they met on the first day of the week, by the way. And we see worship done in giving on the first day of the week. But that's all. <laughs> that's, that's all. No dance teams, no drum sets or pianos, no special soloists or duets or choirs in worship. None of those things do we see. Not that, not that I'm against any of those things, but Ecclesiastes chapter 3 makes it plain that there's a time for all things. There's a time for entertainment. And then, my friends, on the first day of the week, there's a time for worship to our mighty God as He has commanded. Will we follow His direction? Where do you find yourself today? We must move the needle closer to God if we expect to be saved on the judgment day. That's what Abraham did when he took Isaac. That's what we see an example over and over again of those in Hebrews chapter 11. Those who followed God's way find success. You see, we have a great God who is definitely creator and in charge of all things. And this same great God can choose to save any way He wants to. And He chose a way and told us how to do that. Now, God never said anything about praying a sinner's prayer. That's superstitious to say the least. There's not a single verse that says this phrase, accept Jesus Christ into your heart. No, the believer is a believer. The believer is a believer. And that is a person of faith who's going to do what God said to do. Faith that Jesus is who He said He is and that He can do what He said He can do. For God... So loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe Him? Do you believe that Jesus can save you, and that He has chosen a way for you to be saved? Do you believe that you need saving? <laughs> 
Sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? But in all honesty, there are those who, who really feel that they don't need saving. The warning we find is in 1 John 1 and verse 10. There that warning tells us if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar. That's serious business, folks. That's serious business indeed. Hmm. Let's think carefully about this thing. Don't you want to be saved? Don't you want to move that needle closer to God? Now, that sounds crazy, too, but it's not. I mean, let's face it. Sometimes we lie to ourselves. We do. We'll say things like, wow, this lean cuisine really filled me up, said no one ever. We'll lie to ourselves and say, I don't want to be saved because of some unruly behavior that I have identified as Christian because someone else stumbled. And I said, well, if that's Christianity, I don't want any of it. Hmm. First of all, my friend, I want you to understand something. Unkind, unloving, arrogant, prideful behavior is not Christian. It's not. Second, my salvation not, does not depend on anyone else. My salvation depends on my obedience to God and following Him all the way. Friend, it's time to move the needle. To move the needle closer to Jesus Christ. The person on eternity's side would remind us if they could call us by phone this very day and say verse 13 is one you need to hold on to. The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. And we continue reading there that every secret thing will be revealed. That is why it is such great news that our God has given us another day to worship before Him. Another day to respond in obedience to His call. Today is the day to do something different. To do something different. We need to encourage our conditioning to follow after God and put Him first in our lives. When we look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, we see, Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and be discouraged in your soul. Have you ever considered the fact that every time we sin, we're being hostile toward God? It makes us weary, doesn't it? It makes a spirit weary, and yet Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We lay our burdens at his feet. He cares for us. And because he cares for us, he gives us his word that sometimes feels like we're being chastised. And that's what we find in Proverbs chapter 3. We'll look down at verse 11 and read these words. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Now here's something encouraging. If God didn't care if we were saved, he would have left those directions and lessons out. God corrects those that he loves. And that means you. God loves you. He knows you. And He loves you. During this time of social distancing, I hope that you've taken time to consider God's place in your life. I hope that this morning the things that we have looked at together have caused you to think that 
It's time to move the needle closer to God and get out of the yellow zone. You may be in the yellow zone because you have never obeyed the gospel. My friend, all things are ready. The baptistry water is even warm. I'll meet you here. If you want, I'll wear a mask. <laughs> all things are ready if you need to obey the gospel today, but you might find yourself in the yellow zone because of an agenda-based heart. Whatever that agenda might be that has separated you from God, Perhaps today is the day that you have stumbled along the way and you want to come home. Move the needle closer to God and do that today. Do it today. All things are ready. And if you need prayer, the elders here are waiting for your call. Don't wait, my friend. Be His. Let us pray. Our God and Father, we, we come before You on this beautiful Lord's Day. Father, we thank You and we praise You for every blessing that You have given us. And we, we pray, Father, today that You will forgive us for not being thankful enough. Father, we pray that today you will give us the strength and the courage to move the needle closer to You, that we will draw nigh unto You. And Father, we pray but you will also be with those that we know that are sick. Those who are suffering physically, Father, we pray that you will help them and continue to bless them. And we're so very thankful for those that we have prayed for by name and those who have gotten better. Fathers, we come before you this morning. We pray that we will look to you for all of our wisdom. We plead that you will hold us in your hand and protect us from the evil one. Forgive us in these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.